Hello everyone, uh, Stepan here. I'm going to play another training game uh, because I have to prepare for my game on Sunday. I'm playing a Croatian league uh, game which is probably the most important one this season. We are playing the second uh, best team uh, in, in our league. We are first and if we defeat them then we are probably going to advance to the to the third Croatian league. So it's quite an important match. We are playing on six boards. I'm playing board four uh, with white pieces. And since I can play three different opponents and they really don't have any of their game, games online, so I can't prepare, I decided to play as many training games as possible. Uh, and since I have no subscribers uh, online on Leeches at the moment, I'm going to play a 15 plus 15 game against somebody random. So let's do that. And I'm going to, uh, well, lead you through my thinking process and uh, hopefully play a good game. At the end of the video, I'm going to do uh, a quick engine analysis just to see where I went wrong and hopefully learn something. As I did in the two previous games, you have you can watch them on, on the channel if you haven't already. I made some quite instructive errors in those two. Let's hope I can get a game though. Uh, I'm rated just above 2000, so I'm hoping for a serious game. Last uh, The last game I played... Uh, a subscriber, Ravi Ravat, who's rated about 1500, 1600, and the game before that I played somebody uh, random, rated around 1800. Okay, so now I have an opponent rated 2062, so that's a formidable rating. Uh, I'm going to play e4, because I play e4. Okay, uh, we have the Robach, or the modern defense with g6, and uh, I usually play the three pawns uh, setup. And uh, I play uh, c4 and not f4, not the Austrian attack. Let me just turn off the sound on the board, sorry. Sound silent, okay. So now c4, and uh, this is what I've been preparing for, for, a, for a tournament game last season. And I didn't get a chance to play it yet, so let's do it now. Knight to c3. Now, of course, his plan is uh, usually either c5 or e5. So e5. Uh, and if I had my pawn on f4, then the plan is usually to take once and to push the other pawn. You could do it either way, to close down his bishop. Uh, now, well, I want this bishop to remain dead, but I don't really want to waste time taking, because he is going to recapture with the bishop. So I could threaten that uh, by playing knight to f3. On the other hand, if I allow him to take, e takes d4, then knight takes d4. I have opened up his uh, his bishop and his position, but I have two strong pawns, the Morozzi bind on, on c4 and d4, which isn't that useful, of course, because he has because he still has his c pawn, but it's still a good setup. So now my my move should be knight to f3. I still have to decide whether I want to castle kingside or queenside. I could do both. I could play bishop to e3 and leave both options open. So either bishop to e3 or knight to f3. Uh, if I play knight to f3, then he can play bishop to g4, pinning my knight immediately. So perhaps, so perhaps bishop to e3 f3 should be my plan. Uh, well, I think I want to play an aggressive game, so I'm going to go for queenside castling, even though uh, castling kingside is safer. But I decided to play aggressively on Sunday, so I'm going to do that here as well. If he captures, I'm I'm happy. I think because then bishop takes d4 and uh, after knight to f6, knight to f3. Uh, so okay, now I have to I have to retreat my bishop. Okay, castles now. Uh, I can either play bishop e2 castles short or queen to d2 castles long. Uh, it's debatable whether castling long is, is risky here. Well, usually when your pawn is on c4, uh, that's riskier than if the pawn were still on c2. Of course, I, I have to deal with knight to b4 in some positions, knight to g4 in some positions, dislodging my bishop. From, from e3, so perhaps h3 should be played here. Perhaps even knight to d4. I think I'm going to play knight to d4. Because after knight to d4, knight to e5, I can play f4. And then after knight to g4... Hmm. 
Okay, so knight to d4, knight to e5, f4. Uh, perhaps I should play f3, because after f4, knight to g4, I don't really have a good square for my bishop on e3. And then I would be forced to castle uh, queenside. On the other hand, if I play bishop to e2, knight to g4, bishop to f4 should be okay. Then, of course, he can he can capture my knight on c3 and b takes c3, and then my e4 pawn is loose, but he just gave up his bishop pair and his most important defender, his dark squared bishop. So I like that plan. Okay, uh, let's see what he does. Bishop to e2. And if he plays knight to g4, I'm going to play bishop to f4 and just allow him to take on c3 because I think my, my bishop pair and especially my dark sword bishop is too strong for him to handle in that position. My doubled pawns on the c file are, are well, still irrelevant in this position. Of course, he could then play knight back to f6 and threaten my e4 pawn, but then I can play knight to d2 and f3, defending everything. Or he could just attack my pawn immediately. Okay, so now my e4 pawn is attacked. Perhaps queen to c2. No, queen to c2 is not a move because of knight to b4. Knight to d2 seems pretty awkward. Yeah, I, I'm not happy with how this went. No. Okay. Perhaps I should have played bishop d3, knight to e2 to begin with. Now I'll just have to deal with this. So knight to d2 seems to be forced in this position. So I'm going to play it to make sure I don't waste too much time. My opponent has more than he started with. I already wasted two minutes. Now, of course, if knight to b4, I can just play a3. Well, I'm not sure. Of course, I want to play h4, h5, but... Since he's, well, I can actually go for that immediately. I can play, well, I would really love to, to castle queenside, but knight to b4, or perhaps I can play queen to b3, but then my queen is misplaced. Perhaps I can then go for c5 and open up my queen to attack the f7 pawn. In conjunction with h4, h5, that could be dangerous, I think. Or I should just castle kingside and... Okay. Uh, is he now threatening to take on c3? I don't believe that's such a strong threat. I, I, in fact, I would love, love him to take, because then that would block his knight from coming into b4. So I think I'm just going to castle. Perhaps he's threatening f5 now, but I, I don't think he is. So I'm just going to castle. Let's see what he does. And I could also go for f4, f5, now that his knight isn't on f6. And... Okay, uh, do I want to give up my light squared bishop? I, I think I actually do. Now he's of course threatening c5. Okay, uh, c5 would leave him with a permanent weakness on d5, so I'm not too scared of that move. 
On the other hand, uh, he does have the, the e5 square at the moment, which I can, well, challenge with the move f4. If he takes my light squared bishop, then I can just play f3. So perhaps, okay, so my moves are either rook to c1 or knight to f3. Well, after knight to f3, c5, uh, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop takes d4, c takes d4, queen takes d4, I win a pawn, so it doesn't really work because knight to f3 would uncover my, my queen uh, to attack the, the d4 square. Uh, and after, well, does rook to c1 actually do anything? I don't think it does because after rook to c1, he can play c5. If I play knight to f3 now, he doesn't have time to play c5. He can play knight takes f3, bishop takes f3, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and knight to c5, which I can then capture if I would like to, or I would be left with two horrible doubled pawns. Uh, he doesn't actually win the e4 pawn because after knight f3, knight f3, bishop f3, my bishop is defending e4. So I think I'm going to play that. Uh, if after knight to f3, knight takes e2, queen takes e2. Oh, he does win the e4 pawn. Okay. So knight f3, knight e2 check, queen e2, uh, bishop c3, b c3, rook e4 then he does win my pawn. So I have to be careful. Uh, so why do I play? No, I can't play f3. I could consider bishop to d3, not giving up my bishop pair, but I really hate my bishop on e2, and I can't really find a purpose for it. I could play f3, and then challenge his knight with knight to b3. Yeah, perhaps. No, but because after f3, f5, e5, my bishop is hanging on e3. But it's sufficiently defended, I think. So either f3, rook to c1, knight to b3, knight to f3. Knight to f3 loses a pawn because of knight takes e2, check. On the other hand, I can play f4 as well. That doesn't really resolve any of my issues, though. I could play bishop to f3. And then knight to b3. I think this is the critical position, so I'm taking way too much time, but I think that if I if I make a mistake here, I'm probably going to be worse. I might be worse already. Okay, what about capturing the knight? So, no, I don't want to capture that knight. Knight f3, knight e2, queen e2, rook e4. No rook e4. Bishop c3, b c3, rook e4. Do I have a discovery? No. Okay, uh, bishop to d3. I'm going to save my bishop and just keep everything defended, I think. Yeah, but then... Then if knight to f3, 
c5 then I can't really take on d4 okay bishop to f3 I'm going to play bishop to f3 that way I'm defending d4 and uh, if he captures then I don't really care because I can recapture with the queen and then if bishop c3 b c3 And also if I if I play knight to b3 now, his knight is actually attacked, so he's going to have to move it. Uh, knight to e5 isn't really a, a threat, I think. Yeah, okay, so knight to c5. Uh, So okay, uh, he now has two attackers on on the e4 pawn, the rook and the knight. So now if I play knight to b3, I'm removing one defender. So perhaps I should just play... No, yeah, I'm losing a knight if I play b4. Perhaps rook to c1 should be played. Rook c1, knight f3, queen f3, bishop c3, b c3, and I have two defenders. So rook to c1 with a plan of b4 seems okay. Perhaps rook to e1. Rook to e1 is another option. Rook to c1, yeah. I, I think I have to remove his knight from, from c5, so I'm going to play that. Because I, I, I really want to uh, get some control over c5, but I can't without b4. And if I play b4, then knight f3, queen f3, bishop c3 loses a piece. Now at least everything is defended. I can play rook e1 to, to overprotect the e4 pawn. The worst case, I can, I can just capture the knight on d4 to remove some of the pressure. His knights are definitely too strong and I, I would really love to play b4 and get his knights away from, from my position. b4, knight b3 would be the ideal in this position, I think. If he takes on f3, I'm going to take with the queen, of course, just to still keep two defenders. If he doesn't react quickly, then, then bishop takes c5 should be a good move, because I get to exchange queens and I double his pawns on the c-file and I basically have a 4-3 to three majority on the king side, similar to the exchange Roy Lopez or the Berlin defense. He did get c5 in, in that case, usually that pawn should be on c6, so it's one tempo up, but I believe that the end game should be good for me. I do have only 6 minutes though, so I have to hurry. Okay, so b4, knight to e6, knight b3, what does he do? He, he will... Yeah, I, I'm just going to play it because I, I think it should be a good move. He, he doesn't have uh, knight to a4 or bishop to a4 because my knight on b3 is still defending, so b4. I'm just going to play it. Rook to c1 was, I think, necessary because now with knight a4 I can take knight a4, bishop a4, queen a4, and my knight isn't hang my rook isn't hanging on a1 if knight f3 check queen f3. I don't really like to overextend my queen side pawns like this. Uh, because it does weaken a lot of things, but if his knight goes to a6, I'm just better. 
the knight will go to e6 and then after knight to b3 he's going to have to react because I'm triple attacking. Yeah, okay. So now uh, taking with the queen seems forced, otherwise I lose a pawn. I didn't calculate knight to d3 though. But uh, I'm going to have to take with the queen. So now knight to d3, rook to c2. Does that really worry me? No. I have to play rook to c2, otherwise I lose my knight. So, okay. Ah, I'm losing the b4 pawn. No, this is just horrible. I'm losing two pawns. What? Why did I do this? Yeah, I, I I have to give up my a2 pawn as well. Oh, this is just just very bad. Yeah, uh, I underestimated knight to d3. He has a draw if he wants it. I. Yeah, I'm going to have to at least stop him from playing knight to b4 once again. Just one pawn down though, still playable. Just a horrible, horrible mistake. My knight on d2 needs improvement, my rook on f1 needs improvement, yeah, 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 now I have to play knight to b3, I guess there's no other option, otherwise I lose the exchange. Do I have any tricks on f6? I guess he's going to remove my knight now with c6. Yeah, but then he loses uh, his bishop pair. At least he's going to have to capture on b3. Okay. Uh, so what now? Now I, I guess I have to take that. Okay, let's calculate. Uh, I can I can move my bishop and then my queen is protecting my my knight. I can capture on c5 and then after d takes on c5. Well. I think I'm going to have to give up my bishop pair for this. I don't really see a better way to defend. So now rook to e1, just defending my e4 pawn. c6, I guess. Uh, yeah, he can't really play c6 because, because then his bishop is stuck. He would have to give it up, and my knight is completely useless on b3, so I'm not sure how good that idea is. Perhaps bishop to d2 and then c6. Yeah, uh, I did give up the d4 square now, which is pretty bad. But there was no other option. It's not that bad. I might be able to hold this position, even though his bishop is just way better than my knight. He 
his queenside pawns aren't really that strong. So okay, my knight is sufficiently defended. Uh, can I just get some luft? I guess I have to. My my rook is hanging as well, so I can't really move my knight. Yeah, I'm just going to make some room for my king because there seems to be quite a huge chance of a checkmate, so I'm going to defend my knight once more. No, that's not a good move. Because of bishop. Yeah, it's horrible. How do I get any activity here? Perhaps rook to e2 just to relieve some of the pressure. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to play that just to keep all of my pieces protected. I can go for queen to e3, knight to a4, and then put some pressure on c5. If he decides to capture my knight, I'm quite happy because then I take with rook takes c3 and play rook e3 and have some hopes of my e4 pawn being dangerous. I wish I could just get some activity here. Queen to e3 can always be answered with bishop to d4 for now. Mm, he's just attacking my, my poor b3 pawn. And what do I do to protect it? I can play knight a2, although that's a really sad move. Can't really play knight a4 because b5. Yeah, I'm going to have to play quickly, so okay, knight to a2. If rook d1 check, then king to g2. Okay, so... Can I try double double my rooks somehow? Or just be aggressive with h4, h5? I think I'm going to do that because I really need to create some threats in the position. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I'm just just attacking. I don't really see a way to threaten anything I, unless I push my king side pawns. And this way I can also play f4 and open up the position. Bishop e5, f4, queen to c7, f4. Basically my, o my only attacking chances are with the h-pawn and with the f-pawn. My knight is horrible. 
I'm also threatening his rook on d1. So rook to e3 would discover an attack, so I have time for rook to f3 after he moves. He can play rook to e1 though, but then rook to f3 and queen to d7. I have some chances in the position. I, I am material down, of course, and my knight is far inferior to his bishop, but still some chances. Well, uh, three for three. Uh, I played. This is the third training game I'm playing, and the third, third, the third time I'm actually very unhappy with with how I'm playing. So okay, let's open up the position f4. I have to play aggressively. I don't really have a choice. If I had played h5, then he would have had g5, because his queen is now protecting g5, so now after h5, g5, I can take with the f-pawn. Not that it's that dangerous, but... And they do allow his bishop to sit on e5 forever, which might be even worse than this. He could just play bishop f6 as well. But then if bishop f6, I'm going to play f5. Okay, so now he's once again attacking my poor b3 pawn. Could I not just play? No. Oh, he's attacking my b3 pawn and he is attacking my e4 pawn, which sucks. And if I have to play queen to f3, then. I can't play rook to c3 because bishop takes c3. Queen to f3 seems just hopeless. But I guess you have to play it. Yeah. Oh, I just lost my queen. I just lost my queen, he can play rook to g1 check, and then after king to f1 he can play, play rook to f1 check. So I'm just going to resign. Oh. This is what I usually do in tournament games, and I, I just, just don't consider the, the worst option. Oh, he took. Okay, so, well, he definitely should have just checked me and then after king to f2, because I have to keep defending my queen, rook to f1 check, just wins the queen. I I think I'm, I'm right there. We'll see, though. Yeah, I'm playing like an idiot. Okay. Uh, knight to c1 seems like a good idea. 
just to get his to get my knight into the game. And then knight to d3. e5 just to stop his bishop from moving any further and to make some loot for my king so I can get my no ah uh, I, I did that the last game as well I, I just misclicked the move I didn't really want to play this this was a horrible move because now he can just play f6 why didn't he play f6 Well, I don't really know, but let's see if I can hold this position. I guess I have to exchange the rooks now. I do have knight to d3 to defend my e5 pawn, so it might not be that bad. So, okay, knight to d3, defending. I also want to play h5. But then if... I just got checkmated. Oh. Uh, sorry for this, guys. Let me just say good game. Yeah, well... Uh, Okay, uh, yeah, okay, sorry for that, let's just uh, do an engine analysis to see where my demise started, so okay, uh, can you, you can see the engine evaluation I think on the right side of, of the board, uh, so yeah, I, I didn't really want to play e5, d5, sorry. Uh, I guess that does block in his bishop, but I wanted to keep the position open. Yeah, bishop to e2 was a mistake, h3 was okay. Almost equal though. Bishop to g4, yeah, bishop to f3 was horrible. Bishop to g4 was a move, let's see about knight to f3, yeah, he, he can win a pawn like that. That's what I was calculating, so that wouldn't work. Uh, f3 wouldn't work. Yeah, okay, uh, so bishop to f3. Yeah, I'm just allowing too much activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is where I really messed up. Let's see if I can improve on this somehow. Uh, so, okay, queen takes. Knight here. I have to give up an exchange. That was the best move. What? Okay, so here. And if queen takes. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. So I yeah, so I have to take here. It's yeah, just bad game. I I'm sorry for that. Rook to C2 was just Let's see if I ever had a chance to come back. Not really. I just got crushed. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about. He could have just taken my, my queen for free. Because if I go here, then he has this check, and he also has this check. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
I played three blunders in the game and only one in accuracy which doesn't help me at all so let's see so okay in this position the first lesson is after knight to c3 and e5 from now on I'm always going to play d5 uh, can't I just solve this with b4 well anyway so e5 is the move to play I, I can't really play this I can't treat this, treat this as a Sicilian because in the Sicilian you don't really want to push your d5 pawn, you want the d5 square to be available for your knights, your knight from c3. Anyway, uh, congratulations to Topolov, uh, he just crushed me, uh, he was way way better than me, he played the theory better, he played better in the middle game, he punished almost every single one of my mistakes and good job. Uh, well. Uh, I thought I was prepared for this somehow, but I definitely am not, so a lot to learn from. I have to study the theory of the Robach or the modern defense, and uh, if I'm going to play c4, then I'm going to have to learn the variations starting after d5, e5, d5. Uh, thanks for watching, hope you get to learn something from this game, to make sure you don't make the same mistakes in your games, and uh, stay tuned for more chess, hopefully the next one will be better. And uh, see you later. See you tomorrow. Bye.